Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Join Stacy and learn from her 20 years of experience as she shares top-notch advice on marketing best practices for brands and walks you through how to leverage entertainment content and influencer partnerships to increase your brand's overall consumer engagement and most importantly, your sales. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacey Jones, and today's our 100th episode. That's right, we've produced 100 podcasts so far to date, and I so greatly appreciate all of our listeners who have tuned in. After today's episode, we'll be mixing it up a bit moving forward by adding in interviews with brands, agencies, and other industry leaders discussing the magic sauce for a brand's marketing success. We'll be chatting about what works, what should be avoided, and where brands are missing the mark in this lovely world of advertising and marketing we all live in. And now, today, I'm going to talk to you about how some brands have leveraged pop culture to create new brand lines that get massive consumer attention and have already built-in buyers from the get-go. Don't you want to be the brand that has broken the mold and done a little something extra to make yourself super cool and highly purchasable? Going it alone isn't necessarily so easy, but partnering with another brand that already has that aura of cool is an opportunity that if leveraged right leads to major success. And that is what happens when brands create licensed lines around pop culture, specifically the brand partner being a feature film or TV show. For brands interested in leveraging the world of entertainment, partnering with a TV show or a feature film at the very beginning can lead to major brand wins. I've seen it time and again for our clients at Hollywood Branded over the years. It lays the groundwork for a bigger partnership to be built. For a feature film, if you aren't in the film as product placement, when it comes time for planning a marketing campaign, it typically doesn't make as much sense to blow out a partnership with a film that doesn't have your brand included. Getting involved at the get-go with product placement and becoming part of the scene or storyline in multiple TV series and films opens doors to much bigger partnerships down the road. Getting your brand into a TV show or movie as product placement is one way to create a partnership that will help grow brand awareness. And it is a marketing strategy that many brands incorporate into their advertising planning. But there is another tactic that is more sales focused versus brand awareness focused. And that is actually creating a licensed product line from a hit TV show or movie. And if you are able to find a cool product line to develop from a hit film and are willing to market it, regardless if you are in the film or the TV content, then that's another avenue to explore that can lead to high sales success. After all, you have a built-in fan base to leverage. Creating licensed product lines can be done on a limited edition basis or built for a full-scale permanent brand line extension. Typically, the shorter term licensed product creations are built around an event, like the release of a feature film or an anniversary celebration of a TV show that is a well-established favorite. And it can even be built in alignment with the creation of the content, so the brand exists as product placement and is launched into the real world at the same time as the film or TV show is released. Today I'm going to talk about those two types of options, limited edition product launches that coincide with an event, as well as permanent brand lines that have an entire marketing plan built around them, and a few other examples that fall in between. So let's start talking about limited edition product line launches. Hit TV shows offer prime opportunities for brands to show off and promote their product. And that's no exception with Stranger Things, one of the most popular TV series currently on TV or SVOD. SVOD, remember, streaming video on demand. And while many brands have been a little slow to realize the power of a TV show that takes place in the 80s, other brands have found Nirvana. If you don't know about Stranger Things, it's a Netflix original TV series that's about a brand of preteens and teens who live in a small Indiana town back in the early 1980s. The group manages to get involved in combating some extremely obscure and very mysterious supernatural forces as their friendships grow ever closer. Part of the mystery is Eleven, who is a very unusual girl with some very special powers of her own. And while Netflix doesn't like to reveal numbers, Nielsen did a study and announced that almost 16 million people watched the premiere episode of the second season of Stranger Things within three days. And to make that even more astounding as far as the true viewership, that did not include viewers who watched on computers, tablets, or phones, as Nielsen doesn't have access to tracking on those devices, nor the ability to track outside the United States. 
So that's 16 million people who watched just on TV, not again on computers, tablets, phones, or anywhere outside of the United States. That means the TV series is one of Netflix's most popular and that the audience tuning in to watch Stranger Things upon immediate release is just as high and in fact higher than any of the broadcast network's top scripted TV shows. And it's likely that the show has a longer lifespan with delayed viewership. In fact, The Hollywood Reporter ranked Stranger Things as the number two show of the season of all TV shows on air at that time. Getting your brand on the TV screen of millions of viewers through product placement can absolutely help your brand increase recognition and sales along the way. But it can often be hard to quantify that exposure and have proof that it really works. With Stranger Things, brand partnerships, both on screen through product placement and off screen through licensing deals, have created massive sales results that are very measurable. And one such brand that didn't make it onto the screen found another way to leverage success with a licensing partnership. Schwinn managed to get Netflix to allow them to create a publicity stunt of sorts with a licensed line of bikes. If you watch the TV series, you know that all the kids ride bikes, and that's how they get around. But those bikes are not necessarily Schwinn. And for the partnership, that didn't matter. In the licensed Schwinn Stranger Things partnership, only 500 bikes were made. And as fitting for a 1980s bike, you couldn't order it through any digital channel. You had to pick up the phone, very old school, and call 1-800-SHWIN and ask to buy Mike's bike for $379.99. And the bikes? Well, they sold out in one week flat. Schwinn even produced an 80s-style commercial to promote the bikes that it ran digitally on YouTube. Netflix has led the game in completely redefining the way viewers consume entertainment. Now, Netflix is capitalizing on their success by releasing plans to sell merchandise for some of their biggest shows. Netflix series have drawn fans from all over the world, from cult hit Stranger Things to long-standing beloved series like House of Cards and Orange is the New Black. Netflix has a wide variety of fans consuming the original content and capitalizing on the success of their series with comics, books, toys, and branded merchandise makes absolute sense and is a brilliant next step for the company. The expansion of Netflix is important for brand marketers in that not only will product placement be amplified with added marketing of the show itself, but there may be more opportunities for brand marketers to pair with individual shows to create merchandise and extend the partnership off screen, something Netflix has been adamantly against until recently. So the case study I just spoke about with Stranger Things capitalized on current popular content. Let's discuss this case study of a brand created from content that was popular in the past, but that seemingly still holds popular with past fans of the TV show today. When you're considering creating a brand extension from a TV show or feature film, it doesn't mean you need to only look at current day properties. Some content has shelf life opportunities for brand extensions that last literally decades. One such property is The Golden Girls, a show which ran from 1985 to 1992 meaning it hasn't aired a new episode in over 26 years, and the fact that several of the cast is no longer even alive is added in there too. Yet that did not stop the Funkos, a brand that literally exists to create new lines of products by licensing pop culture content like TV shows and feature films. The company designs, sources, and then finds distribution channels for the typically very limited edition lines it's created, partnering with retailers like Target, in this case, or is selling direct to the consumer through their own boxed product offerings and subscriptions. The Funkos created a serial based on the show and secured a distribution partnership with Target. In a week, the product was no longer available, as it completely sold out, garnering national media attention. Now, that licensing deal likely had a product quantity maximum or a time limit frame of being able to exist for a sale, and the product was sold for a longer time frame, while a larger consumer base may have jumped at the chance to purchase the product, it likely didn't have a long-term chance at survival overall. It's more of a product line that gets public fascination based on the quirkiness factor, and it's pure PR. So let's talk about limited promotional partnerships. Sometimes it's about promoting the content versus just creating a brand line for a limited time. In cases where a brand partnership is created, where the brand helps actually advertise the film or TV property for a limited time frame, that's a co-branded partnership where the brand is helping drive awareness of the content partner, typically right before the movie is going to be distributed or for a big anniversary or celebration of a TV show. Some examples. For the 15th anniversary of South Park, Frito-Lay's created a customized line of Eric Cartman's primary food, the Cheesy Poofs, partnering exclusively with Walmart 1.5 million packs of the snack chips were produced. And then there's Ben and Jerry's, 
Ben & Jerry's is one brand that has capitalized on creating flavors based on TV content, such as their Saturday Night Live fudge-covered malt ball flavored ice cream flavors. They're updated yearly with Wayne Schwirled, Sweaty Balls, Lazy Sunday, and Gilly's Catastrophic Crunch, or even the Jimmy Fallon Ice Cream Partnership with The Tonight Dough. Then there's CoverGirl. Star Wars did a CoverGirl makeup partnership, creating a dark side and a light side color, along with other brand partnerships promoting the film. That helped drive fangirls to purchase the makeup line just in time for the film's release. And then there's 7-Eleven. Let's take a look at that partnership. 7-Eleven partnered with Fox for The Simpsons movie back in 2007, where they turned several 7-Elevens into quickie marts from the TV show, where fans could purchase Simpsons-related product like Buzz Soda, crusty o cereal, and Squishies instead of Slurpees. This was done as a massive undertaking for the brand, as they literally did complete facelifts on retail properties. But it was done as a PR stunt, and it garnered a lot of attention, and it was well worth the cost associated with the stunt. And another example is with Nike and Back to the Future. Nike finally created the much-promised limited edition of self-tying shoes, styled after the film in celebration of the film's anniversary. So those were some just good examples of event-driven reasons, right? So it's a film, it's an anniversary, but there is a reason why the production partner actually wants to partner with the brand because they are going to get additional eyeballs to the brand's own marketing or PR that they're doing around the partnership. And then there are those longer shelf life brands that might even start out as a co-promotional limited edition plan and grow to something a little bigger. Some brand deals are just for a limited time. Others create a brand that will stand alone through years of sales. One such brand is Duff Beer, Homer's Springfield favorite in The Simpsons, which has a licensed line of distributors in South America and a long list of brand extensions, including Raspberry Duff, Tartar Control Duff, Lady Duff, Regular Duff, Duff Light, Duff Dry, Duff Stout, and a host of other product lines. Back in 2016, Time included Duff Beer in a list of the most influential fictional companies of all time. And then think about Forrest Gump. You certainly may remember Russell Stover, who had a starring role when Tom Hanks reminisces that life is like a box of chocolates. But what about Forrest Gump and his shrimp boats, which led to someone actually creating 40 real Bubba Gump shrimp restaurant locations, opening the first two years after the film's release. 22 years later, the restaurant's still drawn tourists. That is absolutely amazing. And you can also pretty much look at any brand line extension created from Star Wars as an example of licensed brand partnerships. And sometimes they're short, like in the case of the CoverGirl, which I mentioned before, and other times much longer. Take Pottery Barn Kids as an example, which has created actual furniture and bedding, as well as room accessories capitalizing on both parent and kids' love of the film. The line is still actively sold in stores today and seems to be quite popular. Or what about Harry Potter, where Jelly Belly created a line of jelly beans inspired by the film with Bertie Bott's every flavor beans, including such noxious flavors as dirt, rotten egg, soap, and vomit, along with more tasty treats. Plus, they also created the Harry Potter chocolate frogs, bringing to life the brands that had a big focus in the movies. Even the new sport Quidditch turned into a real thing, without flying broomsticks and balls, with more than 500 teams playing it now around the world, who are all members of the International Quidditch Association, and they're paying for those memberships. And then Staples capitalized on The Office by having their Quill.com brand launch of the line inspired by Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, Brand Paper. And this is by no means a new marketing practice. Way back when, okay, Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister's character in the 1980s Home Alone movie took on New York with a Talkboy cassette recorder that allowed him to alter the audio sound playback. Y'all remember, it was a big plot line, actually. It was an invented for the film, and then Tiger Electronics decided a year later to bring it to real life. And then anyone in Orange County, California, who loves hockey, has Disney's The Mighty Ducks to thank for the invention of their NHL team. Just like in the movie, fans are encouraged to blow duck whistles when goals are scored. And now they are the nemesis of the L.A. Kings. Wonka chocolate bars from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory became real thanks to the Quaker Oats Company. But what I bet you don't know is that Quaker Oats actually funded the entire movie after buying the rights to the book. 
the film was their invention, and they created the Wonka Bar to help promote the movie. Seriously, one of the best-known and kid-favorite films ever was entirely financed by a brand. And then Nestle licensed Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and created an entire brand, Wonka Candy. Post Cereal, way back in 1971, created the line of Pebble Cereal inspired by the Flintstones. This also included the original Cocoa Pebbles and Fruity Pebbles, as well as the later introduced Cupcake Pebbles and Marshmallow Pebbles in 2010. And let's bring it back to today. Leveraging the unbelievable success of HBO's series Game of Thrones, Vintage Wine Estates and HBO Licensing and Retail teamed up to provide their fan base with a purchasable takeaway from the series by unveiling four main wines built to match the strengths of the characters and the terrain of their kingdoms. And then, inspired by the fantasy drama TV show American Gods, B. Nectar Meadery out of Ferndale partnered with the series to create a new line of meads, ciders, and beers, all heavily branded after the Star's Cable Network TV show. According to their website, they are Sweeter, Smoother, Stranger, the Drink of Heroes, the Drink of Gods. And Mead directly plays into the content of what happens on screen, as there is a very important agreement between two main characters where they use three shots of Mead to seal their ominous pact. This partnership was driven by the show producers who wanted to be able to capitalize on their fans' interest in Mead, and they reached out to Bee Nectar and created Believe, a limited edition mead distributed through the brand's already established global base, 25 states and locations in Europe and Asia. And then, there is the opportunity for brands to actually work with the production to feature a new brand line inside the content, and then launch it in real life. Now, this doesn't exactly happen very often. It's super rare. And in fact, it's only happened a handful of times that I've seen it. But it can happen, and brands can actively seek out the opportunity as well. Case in point, when the original Kingsman, The Secret Service, premiered in 2014, it became a huge surprise hit and an instant cult favorite. And the campy sequel added top names like Jeff Bridges, Julianne Moore, and even Elton John to the cast. And it was a major blockbuster success, with each film having a box office of over $410 million globally. But what was most interesting about the film was not its action-packed cinematography, but how Old Forester launched a new line of bourbon called Statesman. Old Forester, a distillery out of Kentucky that makes award-winning bourbons, teamed up with the film to release a Statesman-themed bourbon. Because the bourbon was made particularly for the film, it also lends an organic nature to the placement that they might not otherwise be able to have with other brands. Their stories are part of each other, and that makes a difference to viewers, and the exposure was absolutely extreme. It played a central role to the entire film. You have to see the film, you'll see what I mean. The partnership with Old Forester was a natural, as it was a very authentic fit, since the year 1919 played a prominent role in the film, and the producers wanted to work with a bourbon brand that actually existed then, which Old Forester did. So why does this strategy that allows a brand's marketing to be entwined with the film's work so well? because each helped to market the other, increasing eyeballs and potential box office profit, as well as product purchase. Film productions also love integrations like this because not only do they help market the movie, it helps them out with props and authenticity. So if you are interested in integrating product placement into your entertainment marketing mix, but you simply don't know really where to start, know that there is so much more to product placement than you may think, and we provide a really great in-depth guide in our Product Placement and Promotions 101 ebook, which you can download from our website's content library. You can also visit our Influencer Marketing School at learn.hollywoodbranded.com, where our classes provide you and your team actionable insight to help you create the best marketing partnerships for your brand. And make sure you stop by hollywoodbranded.com for more tips. Check out our library, which has the infographics, white papers, ebooks I mentioned, and videos, or our blog, blog.hollywoodbranded.com, which has hundreds of helpful hints on how to make brands influencer and entertainment content partnerships a success from the get-go. That's it for this episode. I hope it was helpful, and please let me know if you have any feedback. I'll see you next week. And as always, if you need a little or a lot of help, my agency, Hollywood Branded, is here to lend a hand. If you would leave a review or any questions I can address in the future, I'd really appreciate it as your feedback helps me know my advice is valuable and interesting to you. Are you ready to make the magic of product placement? 
celebrity event activations, or influencer partnerships help your sales. Visit HollywoodBranded.com to gain access to free content to learn which key tactics best fit your brand. You'll find surveys, webinars, daily blogs, ebooks, and guides, all created to make sure you have access to the best possible marketing practices. Let's make that entertainment marketing magic happen for you.